Let's get right to today's three stock lunch and here with our trades, David Bonson, CIO at the Bonson Group. First up, you've got NVIDIA earnings. We've talked a bit about that on deck tomorrow. The shares up more than a percent today ahead of results. What's your trade on NVIDIA? Well, we've been a sell for a long time in the sense that we just believe the valuation issue is insurmountable. Uh, if the company executes perfectly for years to come, which, of course, they will not, uh, the stock is overpriced. And it's a 1999 Cisco lesson for me, a little bit of uh, PTSD. I think uh, Tyler remembers that era well. And I will say that NVIDIA seems to me to be uh, Cisco of the next generation. Very interesting. I mean, I, I think of the, the stock that I associate with the 19, uh, the late, late 1990s is CMGI. It just went up and up and up. But NVIDIA is a real business. I don't know that CMGI ever really was. NVIDIA is a real business. You're, bi you're, you're not biased, but your uh, portfolio management style is what? To chase dividend growers or what? It is to pursue dividend growers and to hold companies that have the free cash flow that is sustainable and growing, and then they are distributing more and more of that to the owners of the business over time. And so it is a bias, but it's embedded in our philosophy of investment. And a company like NVIDIA generates plenty enough free cash flow that they could be more than a 0.4% dividend payer. But um, I think you're exactly right, Tyler. CMGI is not the analogy I'd make to NVIDIA. NVIDIA yeah. is a wildly successful company. So was Cisco. Yeah. For 25 years, Cisco has grown earnings and revenues and everything else. It's just that the stock never got back to what it was in the bubble. It's a peer valuation. Let's problem. move on to another super hot stock, and that would be Eli Lilly. What do you say here and why? Uh, 117 times earnings on a, on a drug company. It's pretty rich. They also are at a yield that's less than half a percent. But unlike NVIDIA, Lilly does have a history of being a great dividend grower. Now they're generating more cash flow than they've ever generated off of this, you know, wildly successful weight loss drug. And they're paying out 20% of earnings in dividend. It just boggles my mind. Uh, they're not growing the dividend. It, the yield is too low. Look, they're a victim of their own success. The stock's tripled in the last year and a half. So it's been a great thing to own. But no, we don't believe it can become the robust dividend grower that we like to own. Finally, we have shares of Paramount Global falling because of the buyout drama coming to an end here. Look at those shares off five and a half percent. Edgar Bronfman Jr. walking away from the bidding war, which all confirm all but confirms that Skydance Media will be the next owner of the company. So how are you trading Paramount? Uh, wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. Watch the documentary on this drama someday, but don't buy the stock. David Bronson, thank you so much for being with us today.